Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. All right, welcome to Hot Takes, episode two. Today we are going to look at Olivier Coipel, The Unworthy Thor, issue number two, penciled and inked by Olivier Coipel. Hot Takes is basically we do a quick but deep dive on a particular single issue. Um, I wanted to choose a book that Olivier had inked himself because I think he really creates a, a, an amazing amount of energy with his ink lines. Um, I like that it's scratchy and kind of loose, but yet he creates beautiful value with things. I mean, obviously, seeing it in color, uh, a little bit of that will be... Um, you know, blended in with, um, you know, digital color, but, uh, we've done a few videos on Olivier. If you'd like to check them out, I'll try to search my channel and see if I can spot him. But, uh, yeah, we've definitely looked at his work in black and white and we can always return to it. He, he's one of my favorite, uh, modern day, um, comic book artists. Um, what I like about Olivier's work is the feeling that I get when I look at his comics, which I hope that you walk away from this video feeling, which is he always really inspires me and it looks fun. Um, sometimes you look at a book and it looks amazing, but you don't leave with that same sensation. It's more of a feeling of like, oh, I could never do that. Or, um, you know, it's it's incredible but this or but that but with Olivier I just go man I want to get in that world and mix it up and and have this spontaneous and really energetic art so all right let's get into it we try to do these in order so um we won't go to the back of the book we'll actually go to the front of the book so this is the credits page I guess you'd call it this is probably a panel from inside the book um but yeah so it's a uh, Olivier Coipel uh, did the art and then Matthew Wilson did the colors and we've got Jason Aaron writing it and Joe Sabino did the lettering so all right let's enjoy this lots of nice splatter here um Quipel, when he pencils his pages uses blue line quite a bit in fact if you look at any of his original art you'll see that he's quite heavy-handed with the with the blue pencil and uh doesn't make it a precious um sort of endeavor um you know to have like some sort of beautiful sort of almost immaculate looking um uh, original um he really kind of focuses let me see is that right no here we go um he really tends to focus on on the task at hand which is just drawing um very very strong storytelling pages um, creating the energy and the dynamics that he wants. And I mean, here's a beautiful example of it. In fact, let's turn this grayscale and um, just kind of see if we can remove a little bit of the value here. Probably won't be flawless, but it'll get us part of the way there. But and get kind of an idea of what the black and white look like. This would probably be black, though. Let's see if that kind of helps. But I mean, it's really, really interesting how he draws because he he indicates planes i've got to keep an eye on the clock because the goal is to get these to be approximately 10 minutes he indicates the planes with his line work so so where the line work falls is actually him um uh, showing you planes let me put this back to rgb for a second i can kind of give you an idea of what i mean is if um uh, if this was a chunk of muscle what he'll do with his lines is he'll come underneath it and sort of cradle the the object. So when you're seeing pieces like this, what he's doing is he's he's basically showing you, hey, there's an object that's right here. There's an object right here that sort of sticks out, and the lines support that. So the lines aren't just randomly put on the faces. So he kind of places those in some somewhat of a realistic uh, way. But his work is kind of cartoony, so it's a real nice blend of the two. And then he puts these beautiful kind of high contrast shadows and um, more suggestive um, elements, you know, where he didn't like literally draw these like perfect stairs here. They look like chunks of rock that have just been kind of placed there over the eons. And uh, it's a really, really effective way to work and quite beautiful page, in fact. I had a really fun afternoon 
Jag, if you watch this video, what's up? Jose. Um, Jose and I went to um, Quan Chang, who is Olivier's uh, art dealer, and we spent about 30, 40 minutes looking through Koi Pell's art. Actually, Dylan did too. Dylan, what's up if you watch this? Um, and uh, it was a lot of fun. We were we looked at Magic Order original art and, and some of the other stuff. Was so, some of this stuff, actually. And uh, it was fun, but boy, what, a, what an, uh, an education getting a look at his original work so it's cool i've never inked olivier i did one commission that was really really loose years ago um but but i've never really done uh any inks on him in any sort of uh any piece it's a shame too because uh i think we could do something interesting together but that ship has left the harbor <laughs> <laughs> he's fine on his own and I'll be fine on my own so it doesn't it doesn't really matter in the big scheme of things but it would have been interesting yeah he's very bold, bold with this stuff I mean again let's let's take this to grayscale we can kind of take a little peek at what it might have looked like in black and white you can see look at that splatter it's wild style this is wash he does ink wash on his pages he does real scratchy kind of fine lines this is digital um but uh you can kind of see where he's actually placed in wash it usually will have a little bit more of a um kind of smudgy look that's did that looks digital to me but uh he does actually place wash on some of these pieces so his magic order art is well worth checking out in black and white as well okay that one, that one. this is a great spread and what, what I liked about this particular issue, too, was the fact that um, it's not overwrought. There's a lot going on, and it's a, it's a pretty dynamic-looking issue. But there's nothing that I see in here where I go, oh, like, he spent months and months and months on this. Now, he may have, but um, in my opinion, a spread like this you could easily do in two days. There's not that much on it. There's not a lot of background. There's really not a lot of characters, to be honest. I mean, it's like he's drawn you know some figures and a little bit of explosions and stuff there's there's you know nothing too hard you can see a little bit of uh, this again could be a digital wash but i i know for a fact that he does lay wash and i don't think you know it's hard to tell if that is this looks like it might be his stuff uh, but it doesn't really matter but it's always fun to kind of reverse engineer things. I, I honestly, I'm, I've said this in past videos. I don't really think that ink wash colors well digitally. This is my own personal take on it. I think that um, the aesthetic for me doesn't really work. But it's it's like, um, you know, there's people out there that don't really particularly care for uh, pencils digitally colored. So it's just you know kind of what what you're into. It's interesting too is so so a lot of this line work is similar to like line work that I use um, and uh, one thing that you find when you ink this thin um, although these lines aren't that thin is that, that they will break up and sometimes not fully reproduce but it gives a look but uh, sometimes when I personally scan my own work and I see stuff that looks like this um, you know, there's a part of me that kind of goes, man, is that too rough or too sort of crackly? Because what happens when you work digitally, I've talked about this before, we're not in Clip Studio, so I can't give you a real good example, but your lines are pixel perfect, which what I mean by that is, is there's no real disintegration of the line. There's, there's brushes that, and, and pens that you can use that, that have that effect. I, there's a rough pencil that I use and another, um, digital pen, um, that that I mean you know you can you can make stuff that that will sort of mimic this but uh, yeah I mean if you really really look at these lines up close I mean they're basically crumbling apart but yeah sometimes it concerns me when I ink stuff it depends on who I w would be inking but like on Ryan Benjamin who I've worked with a lot over the last few years sometimes I felt a little bad about the lines looking so scratchy Ed Bennis uh, uh, the stuff that I did on Ed Bennis had a little bit of that look too but. It kind of works too, you know. It's just it's a different aesthetic. I think what what kind of is going to happen is people are going to get used to a very sterile looking ink approach. As more people use digital, and a lot are already, um, and so that will be sort of a, a an aesthetic that people are, are uh, conditioned to to um, consume, you know, enjoy, uh, and. Uh, things like this will appeal to to possibly the same people maybe not you know 
depends on how well you draw. Drawing can be judged on many, many different uh, sort of facets. Um, but uh, great looking art sometimes doesn't matter what uh, package you put it in. It was interesting. I have a friend who works pretty rough, rougher than this. And uh, he always said that, that when he switched over to that style, it, it, he lost a lot of fans because of it. Um, because people think that it's like more careless, it's easier to do, um, and and we both agree that doing rougher art actually is probably more challenging th than doing clean art. Because um, clean, you know where you're headed. With rough, it's a balance more, meaning that uh, all the rough needs to uh, ultimately sort of work as a page. This is beautiful. But again, this looks this looks fast to me. I don't feel like he spent forever on these pages. And in fact, you, the issue after this, there was two pencilers, which would lead me to believe is he was sort of maybe um, uh, distracted or, or maybe working on two things at once or, or just wanted to get it done. This is a great sequence, though. I always love this. Colors are great on this, too. Thor is messed up and the hammer in his chest is so badass this is great i was tempted to do magic order here's another funny thing that olivia does that that uh, i sometimes have a little guilt on is um do you see the dirt and the gutters where the white is and sometimes he'll even i saw another page where there was like lines like and, and even um kind of like a scribbly thing that was still in the thing but when you work rough you know you can leave stuff like that and it becomes the style like like the edge of this panel border generally speaking when i'm done and i've scanned my art if i catch stuff like that i will kind of clean it up so you know sometimes i do it digitally just because it's like you scan it and you see it and you go oh shit there's like a bunch of little weird debris um so sometimes with blaster kid blaster kid will be a little more not not rough but but uh I think it, it will have room to breathe. I didn't want that to be seen. It was supposed to be the big spoiler finale, but anyway. But this is cool. Again, these look somewhat uh, like a ju ju judiciously um, manicured detail. This is great right here. Man, that is so cool looking. Look at that. <laughs> we need to do... Um, oh, God. His name always freaking escapes me. I'll remember it in a second. Um... Uh, what is his name? No. What is his name? Come on, Rich. You could do it. <laughs> Quan represents him, too. He did The Punisher. He did a book for Image Comics. He kind of draws like this. He's sort of a he's sort of a mix between Koipel, Travis, and Lanil Yu. Why am I forgetting his name? I keep wanting to call him Jorge Molina, but it's not Jorge Molina. It's a... Uh, what's his name? I don't know. It's not good that I always forget it. Not not for my brain, but uh, I wish I would remember his name more. People are yelling at the thing right now. It's da 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 da. This is very cool. Oh, Jerome Opeña. That's who it is. <laughs> Jerome Jerome draws a little bit like this. He's a, he's usually more detailed than Koipel. I personally prefer pencilers who um, put less detail, more more suggestive stuff, more where it actually looks like they're slightly rushed. I don't know why that is. It's just it gives me more room to soak in the art and kind of enjoy the. Um, atmosphere of things and i think when sometimes when everything is drawn very literally um it's just it's a little maybe a little less epic it probably comes from a little bit of my my fandom of uh, someone like frazetta where he he sort of you know the backgrounds he called them fluffy and um you know a little abstract and it's kind of fun so this this to me always looks fine Koipel's the guy that I definitely get the sense that, that work and play are two very different worlds for him and that he really enjoys his downtime. And so, um, you know. Some people are more like artistic sharks, meaning that they just draw all the time. 
that's kind of what they do. Koipel, to me, I feel like like he does his work and then he does his life. I'm sure there's some crossover, but uh, I mean, I definitely have friends that uh, they just draw, 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 and draw, and draw. This is great. I love this character right here. It's very, very cool. <laughs> it's funny. A lot of these scans have a slight blur, like right in the middle. You can kind of see it right there. I don't know why that is. I've noticed it on a few of them. This is such a great face. It's really good. Koipel has been working a long time. I first saw his stuff on Legion, Legion Lost, back then. He was apparently, I think um, Eric Kennedy and I talked about this in, in the um, one of the videos that we did together. Um, he was an animator, and he would draw comic books uh, during his break at lunch and probably before and after, and uh, was doing some really, really good and very interesting stuff back then and did a huge, long run of work for DC. And then kind of went to Marvel, and, and I think a lot of people, unless you uh, were collecting comics back then, don't even realize that he did a pretty large body of work for DC. But yeah, this is all very Travis-influenced. I mean, he's definitely got a heavy dose of that and stuff, which is cool. I mean, it looks good. It's, he's... I, I always felt like he kind of... He, he was able to extract very, very cool isms from the work and uh, still kind of keep his own structure. It's funny because I watch a YouTube channel, Rick Beato. I'm sure a lot of you guys know he's got like 2 million subs now. But uh, Beato breaks down music kind of in a similar way to like how I do comic book stuff. And um, I always learn a lot from his videos. And in fact, when he breaks down things, a lot of times I, I do start to think about comic books uh, in that way where, um, you know, you're looking at the rhythm and the dynamics and like, you know, what, what impact did, you know, so-and-so have on other work and how did that translate into their work and how did it move that, in, I call it like an influence chain, but, you know, like, <clears throat> it's almost like a family tree. Like if you have Kirby right here and then Kirby turns into these three artists but then this artist maybe has other influences you could i mean i don't really want to talk about it too much but um you you know uh you can really find some interesting like lines of of aesthetics and stuff like that and it's fun and then you know you have the um the game changers who have influences but then influence a, a big chunk of artists so it's cool to see how uh things trans you know how it transcends Koipel has influenced a lot of artists and I see artists that have the influences that Koipel had but probably through Koipel's filter and might not necessarily have experienced uh, some of his influences so it's a real interesting thing social media has made it fun too because we get to see you know like uh, artists like Koipel he actually shares a lot of other artists work and his stories um, so you can kind of see what he's sort of vibing on and you know, he shares different stuff and it's interesting to see. So, all right, this, we're going to be wrapping this up. Um, please make sure to check the description box. You can support Blaster Kid early. You can follow Kelsey Shannon, who Kelsey and I do a weekly live stream here on YouTube. Uh, definitely follow me on Twitter and Instagram, whichever your favorite platform is. I will say this. I don't post the same things on the different sites, meaning that if I post uh, something on Instagram, if I post that day on Twitter, it will not be the same material. So if you follow me on both, you will get different art uploads. Uh, I don't repeat my posts. So that could be bad. It could be good. I think it's a little more interesting. So... I always have to be different, <laughs> but the same too. You don't want to, you don't want to alienate people. So, all right, smash the like. I would hit the notification bell. I think it's time, friends. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please, please do. All right, so that was my hot take on Olivier Coipel. I think he's a phenomenal artist. This is a very, very sort of spontaneous uh, looking comic book that he drew, penciled in ink by himself. And uh, it's very cool, but, but very direct. Let's do, let's do it take out some of the gray i've seen this original it actually is quite simple and in fact i think even the gray back here is is gone um but uh th i broke that gray up a little too much let me um see if i can just pull out maybe a lighter gray 
It's pretty badass, though. It's cool shit. I dig it. Oh, my gosh. All right. Have a great day. I love you all. I will definitely see you all Sunday for Super Fun Sunday. Uh, if you have any recommendations, let me know. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hot take.